believing for nothing just chill but if you believe it for a woman for God lift your hands and receive it come on receive it I believe I believe We come giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise that you so richly deserve. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. And as I stand behind this sacred desk, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Just want to be your oracle today, Lord God. Just want to be your vessel. Speak, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. 
As you can see on the screen, I have chosen the topic, Woman to Woman. Amen. Amen. Uh, the theme, of course, is found in Isaiah 714. You know, Emmanuel. Pastor Aaron talked about on the first Sunday. And last Sunday, he said, let us worship the king. So, you know, I just want to continue in that same theme with woman to woman. And, 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 and if we're honest with ourselves, when we think about that, we go back to the 70s, baby boomers, and we think about that conversation, the world, the song, woman to woman. May I speak to Bob? Bob, this is sure. You might not know who I am, but the reason I'm calling you yeah, we, we know, we, we know, we heard, you know, teenager in high school. You know, and, and when I think about that, the world has put a negative connotation on women having relationships. They can't be close. They, they can't support each other. And as that song back in the 70s implied, they were really fighting over a man that wasn't even there. They wasn't even their husband. You know, how are you going to call somebody and say, the reason I'm calling you is because the man you're in love with, he's, no, he's not yours. He's not yours. He's not Shirley's. He, he wasn't Bob. He wasn't nobody's. Okay? So, 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 so the world has given us a negative connotation as women meet and connect. It has to always, Pastor Aaron, be in a negative way. But back in the biblical days, even before that song came, you know, women connected. Ruth and Naomi, Elizabeth and Mary. You know, come on. Well, there was always meant to be a positive connection. So, uh, as Pastor Aaron read the scripture, it, it, the, the whole story really is so powerful, you know, really it covers all, all the verses, really. But, but, but I had to kind of capture the essence of the meaning of it. Woman to woman. A little bit of history, though. Zacharias, he, he served uh, in the temple for a week, twice a year in the temple. And out of the 18,000 priests that served in a year, he was selected. And, and the way they select the, from the 18,000, they cast lots, right? So guess what? Zacharias was chosen for that such time. Uh, where he offered the incense. He would, you know, go in and, and the priest, you know, and they could only do it once in their whole career, their lifetime. Wow. See how God set that thing up. So, so it was, this was the moment, Zacharias. You know, he was in there doing his duty, his once in a lifetime career, and Angel Gabriel appeared before him and said, you know, I, I know what you've been praying for. I'm kind of paraphrasing. I know what you've been praying for, and I know that your wife, Elizabeth, is barren, right? And, you know, he announced to Zacharias, you know, your prayers have been answered. She will conceive, and she will bear a son, and his name will be John. Right. And Zacharias missed her. <laughs> he expressed doubt and lack of faith by asking, how will I know? In other words, he was saying, well, I need a sign. You know, you're telling me my old wife is going to have a child. You know, you need to give me a sign. God was like, uh, Angel Gabriel was like, okay, since you don't believe, you're not going to be able to speak until all of this comes to pass. I'm going to mute you. you know, I'm going to shut your mouth since you don't know what to say. Okay? Because, because the thing is, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is yes. and that he is a rewarder yes. of them that diligently seek him. So, you know, he, 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 he displeased God. God's like, oh, okay. So, what Zach Zacharias and, and, and we do sometimes too, if, if we're honest with ourselves, he was basically saying, I can't go out there because what happens when the priest goes into the temple, a crowd gathers. And then when the priest comes out, you know, they want to hear a word or whatever. So he, you know, Zacharias was basically saying, you know, if I could use my spiritual imagination, I can't go out there and say to the crowd, you know, the angel told me that Elizabeth was going to have a baby in her old age, and I ain't got no proof. They'll think I'm crazy. 
So that, that's what he said, how will I know? You know, you, you, you have to give me a little chunk, chunk to work with. It's pretty much what he was telling God. How are you going to tell God? Give, give me proof. Give me something to work with, Pastor. No, we don't do that. So back to the scripture, it's very powerful because for five months, Elizabeth just kind of kept it to herself. She kind of pondered it because what she was saying in a nutshell is, you know, God has dealt with me and taken away my reproach. He has taken away this thing, this barren thing, and he has given me another chance. And sometimes when God does something miraculous, you know, sometimes you need to just keep things to yourself. Just don't tell everything. You, you know, God, God is doing this and that. Sometimes God just wants you to just sit back for about three or four or five months and just, just enjoy the blessing. You know, just don't run out and tell everything. You know, because there's a timing, there's a kairos moment in everything that God does. And so, so Elizabeth understood that. Amen, amen. So, so, so then... At the same time when Elizabeth, you know, God, God is so miraculous. At the same time that Elizabeth in her sixth month, guess what? That same angel visited Mary. And, and, and she was a spouse to Joseph, which means they had not come together. They had not been married. Twelve years old. Twelve years old. An angel visited Mary. What a huge responsibility. What a, what, what, what a holy concept, conception that was. And he announced to her, the Lord is with you. Emmanuel, that same thing. He, he, told, he told Mary, he said, the Lord is with you. He has found favor. Now, Mary didn't make that same mistake Zacharias made. <laughs> you know, how would this be? You know, he, he said, how will I know? Mary said, how can this be? Basically, what she was saying was, you know, just tell me how it's going to be. You know, I believe you. You know, Mary's like, uh-uh. <laughs> you know, so her remark did not reflect unbelief. She accepted the role without question. She just said, you know, how can this be? You know, just, just tell me, you know. So she indicated really that she was willing to do whatever it took. And how many of us, when God gives us a message, do we doubt? Do, are we a Zacharias or are we a Mary? Because sometimes when we are a Zacharias, we avoid the miracle. God is like, okay, I was going to give them this, but let me just put it back in the closet like we do our kids sometimes. They're not ready for it yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Mary visited Elizabeth because in the message from Gabriel to Mary, he told her, your cousin is also pregnant. And I'm paraphrasing. And her baby will be the forerunner for your baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, 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 so um, given the immense pressure, uh, social pressures and stigma that Mary was about to endure, she needed somebody to understand where she was coming from, woman to woman. One to one. So she had to go to somebody that would understand her. Here's Mary, pregnant by the Holy Ghost, knew not a man yet, engaged only, and here's Elizabeth, her husband can't talk. <laughs> so they both had issues with the men in their life for different reasons. Woman to woman. You know, so Mary realized that she needed Elizabeth, and really they needed each other, woman to woman. There's just some things that only a woman can understand mm -hmm. with another woman, mm -hmm. and one of them is childbirth. Mm -hmm. Men can imagine, they can imagine carrying a child for nine months. They can imagine what the labor pains will be as they, as you grab their hand when you're in labor and you're trying to squeeze it or you grab their throat, I mean, whatever you do. 
<laughs> you reach in and they, they knock your hand away. But seriously, they can only imagine. And then add child preg I mean, pregnancy and child labor and all that. And then just add what they were going through. Back in the biblical days, you pregnant and you're talking about you, the Holy Spirit impregnated you. And then, you know, Zacharias, he, he mute. So you know how people are, mm -hmm, you know, when in that temple. He must not have been right. His spirit wasn't right. It must be something <laughs> that he done done. <laughs> now he cursed. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth pregnant, and, and, and she got a, a, a mute husband. That's a mess. You know, people never, never look at the God, the God factor. Granted, Zacharias made a choice, and you know, he's dealing with the consequence. But my point is, sometimes folk ain't gonna look at, oh, wow, she's pregnant. They probably had all the focus on, you know, uh -huh. he done went in that temple. You know how it is in the biblical days, you go in that temple and you ain't right. You ain't gonna come out right either. <laughs> Amen. So, so what, when a, a miracle involved and, and women are walking in miracles, uh, both of them have a divine purpose, Pastor Andrew. Because in order for Jesus to uh, fulfill everything, John had to come to, 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 to first. So first things first. So, so Mary believed. And, and Elizabeth believed it. and there was that spiritual connection woman to woman you know not like the song in the 70s Barbara I don't know how you're going to take this whether you're going to be cool or come out of a bag on you because it really don't make a difference remember that because a man you're in love with he's mine from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet what he ain't nobody's that negative fighting over something that's not even yours. So, so, so there could never have been a sisterhood in that story or in that song. But check this out. Mary and Elizabeth, both women had dilemmas. Mary pregnant out of wedlock, as I said. Elizabeth pregnant and her husband came to Mary's baby, Elizabeth's baby, excuse me, being the forerunner of Mary's baby. A divine connection, church. And what it says in verse 41, what does it say? It says the baby leaped in Elizabeth's womb and John, you know, John in, in, in Elizabeth's womb. And at that moment, because the scriptures say Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, which means uh, back in the first part of this chapter, the angel Gabriel told Zachariah the same thing. He will be filled with the Holy Ghost even before he's born. My, 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 my. So Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. The same thing that the angel had predicted back in verse 15. And then Elizabeth feels, uh, fulfilled something else when she was filled with the Holy Ghost. She said, blessed are thou among women. Mary is blessed because she had the privilege of giving birth to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God incarnate. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and verse 45 says, Blessed is she that believeth. Mm, in contrast to what Zechariah, he didn't believe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, my sisters and brothers, when God gives you a message and you don't believe, he will mute something in your life. Stop, mute, hush, as we say in the South. Amen, amen. So, when Mary and Elizabeth connected woman to woman, Mary did just leave. That wasn't just a little quick drive-by as we do. Girl, I got to go. Three months she stayed. She stayed until Elizabeth came to full time. She saw it through. Woman to woman, sister to sister. Are we just shallow? Friendships and do we have shallow relationships with our sisters, ladies? Or do we see the whole thing through? I'm sure she needed some help. Mary stayed there and helped her cousin, her sister, woman to woman. Because remember, Zacharias can't talk. 
still can't talk. Right? So I'm sure Mary was a good help. Communication. <laughs> you know, because um, when you're married, such as Elizabeth and Zacharias was, you're one. What happens aside of your one becomes mute. What happens when the other half is not living to their full capacity? What happens? Mm, yeah, you only have one side of yourself. Because the scriptures say the two becomes one flesh. Half of the flesh can't all, right? So the parallel, because after uh, Elizabeth uh, confirmed Mary's uh, role as carrying the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Mary in 46 through 56, she broke out in a song, a praise song, which parallels with Hannah who was barren in the Old Testament. Hannah broke out with a song in 1 Samuel 2, 1 through 10. The Old Testament concealed. The New Testament revealed. Three months Mary stayed until it was time for John to give birth, for John to be, be born. Oh, what support is my point to bring home? A sisterhood should be. It should be loving. It should be caring. It should not be any competition. And definitely not fighting over a man that's not even nobody's. It's not even yours. The car he drives in, I think the world said. I, I paid the money. What? So I'm telling you all these things, the song says, because woman to woman, just how much I'll do to keep. What? And then she got married the same. Woman to woman, if you ever, what? This is the kind of woman to woman. The godly woman to woman. That song needs to stay in the trash. No, that's not how Christian sisters act. Because first of all, neither one of them should have been in a relationship in the first place. Amen. Yeah, yeah, woman to woman. And as I close, I wasn't going to hold you on to As I close, my brothers and sisters, remember this. God never does anything that's easy. He does things that are divine. I'll repeat that. God never does anything that's easy. He does things that are divine. One more thing I want to leave you with. When you receive a word from God, there's always opposition. When you receive a word from God, there's always opposition. Woman to woman, connect. Woman to woman, support. Woman to woman, care. Woman to woman, love. Woman to woman, confirm what God has already said to you. That's that sisterhood that the world knows nothing about. But we as believers, we must always remember, we should always be there for each other. And when we do, the miracles will be bigger. They'll be bigger. They'll be better. And it'll be something that you can't even imagine. So I would just encourage you, your sisters, whether it be a mother or uh, a daughter or a sister or a friend, that connection, woman to woman, be there for each other, confirm for each other, and stay, stay the full three months until the blessing is ready to be delivered. Amen? as we stand all over the congregation. Because the miracle will be bigger and better. We know that everybody here is saved. So I will beseech and encourage those in uh, virtual land. 
If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're here. We are a church that tells the truth. We are a church that will love you. We are a church that don't judge. There's only one judge, and that's God. So if you confess with your mouth and believe the Lord Jesus Christ, and that he was raised from the dead, the dead, thy shall be saved. Well, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I'm doing. Doesn't matter. That's the sanctification process. Let's take care of the penalty part first. Saved from the penalty of sin. Then, present and ongoing is saved from the power of sin. That's sanctification. And then one day, we get up out of here. That's saved from the presence of sin. That's the glorified body. So, wherever you are sitting on your sofa, in your kitchen, wherever you are in your car, you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. And RCCC is always willing to receive you as a member virtually or in person. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you.